Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Blaspheming Bite. It's a long due episode and this is the first episode during the coronavirus epidemic pandemic that's raging across the world right now. So today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to look at the lead code problem and it's going to be a recursion as well, but it's also a trees question. We are going to be looking at how we can solve this trees question using a recursion. Um, I'll be pointing to the solution uh, as well. So I won't go through the entirety of the code. We'll just go through some parts of the code that took me some time to understand. And using the, uh, the tools that I'm going to give you, you will be able to get a good intuition of how to understand or go through the code. So let's jump right into it. The problem we're going to, be, we're going to do today is called, given the number n, um, let's say from n is equal to 1 to whatever, you have to return all of the trees which are full binary trees. Now, how do you define a full binary tree? Now, a definition of a binary tree is if you have a node, that node should either have two children, a left and a right, or it should not have any children at all. So that's the definition of a full binary tree. So if you're giving, given the value n is equal to one, which means there's just one node, uh, the only solution would to have would be to have a node like that, right? Now, how we're going to uh, solve this problem is we're going to look at a couple of uh, points. The first thing we're going to do is going to define the problem, which is what you're doing right now. Now let's say we're given the value n is equal to three. Now what are, what are the options that we have? We, we've already exhausted one guy, now we have two more left, right? So, and the only other option is to do a left and right so that we want to balance it. So we need a full binary tree. Now let's look at another example of n is equal to five. Now it gets a little bit tricky, right? So you start off with one and then you're left with four, right? So if you want to keep going forward, you for sure have to have a left and a right, right? Now here you have uh, uh, an ethical choice, a very philosophical question you could ask yourself. Do I put the remaining left and right to my left guy or do I put it, the remaining left and right guys on my right guy? Well, you don't have to worry too much. The answer is both. So if you're, if the value of n is 5, then you'll have to put both of these, um, you have to put, you have to return both of these trees as your result. So that basically is your problem statement. Now, moving on, the second, second thing that I want to go over which comes up uh, in the solution is how do you take a decision of whether uh, a certain n value is valid or not? Okay, let's look at that. Let's say you're given a value n is equal to two. Let's start small, right? We're given a value n is equal to two. Now in this case, is it possible to even find uh, a full binary tree? No, right? Let's say you give one and then you need two more to be able to fill that up. Now let's look at n is equal to four. So n is equal to four gives us some options, right? So you start off with one and then you've got three left. So you could do, you could do this and then you're stuck with the dilemma, right? You have one more left, but you can't put it here. You can't put it here. You can't put it here and you can't put it here. So the intuition that comes from looking at these two examples is that if your n value is an even value, it's not possible to build that. So if you ever get an option like that, just, just get back from the code. So you will see some part where you're using the modulus two, n modulus two um, equal to one that's a valid case, like, because you have some value, it's an odd number, okay? So that's, that's one thing that you'll have to look at when you're doing this problem. Now, the third problem is, 
when you're doing this question you need to break it down into smaller steps okay now in order to break it down into smaller steps let's start off small let's uh, draw the other guy the guys that we drew earlier right so n is equal to one you just have one node so let's that put let's put that into a box n is equal to three what are the options you have this is the only option you've got right what about n is equal to five n is equal to five you have the option okay you start off like this okay and then you have the option of putting so at this point how many do you have left the current value of n is equal to three so you can take this n is equal to three and put it here or you can put it here right you have to you have to look at both of the options now how do you come up with that like how do you how do you decide um, okay do i Do, do, oh, sorry, it should be n is equal to two. Do I decide? Do I decide to put? Um, let's do it here. Actually, n is equal to three. Do I decide to put n is equal to three here and n is equal to one here, or do I put put it like this, right? So you can see that there's an n is equal to 3 here and by the same example you have n is equal to 3 here right so this is a this is a this is the second question that we had to solve how do we come up with the values or the number of nodes we're going to give to the left subtree and how many we're going to give to the right subtree so now the question is pretty simple you you start you have a for loop which starts with giving the minimum number to the left guy and the maximum number to the right guy. Now let's do that example over here, okay? For n is equal to five, you already exhausted one guy. So how many nodes are you left with? You're left with n is equal to four nodes. Now how can you sum up to four? What are the different possibilities of summing up to four? You can have one plus three. So the left would have one and the right would have three. That's one option. You could have two plus two. Would this be a valid option? I mean, for a regular tree who doesn't have expectations and who doesn't want to become big in his life, yeah, sure, it doesn't matter because he's he he's not he's not even uh, aiming to become a full binary tree. For him, it's fine. You can do two and two, but no. But we are uh, highly motivated people, and we want to get a full binary tree. So that's not an option. We can't even go there. What's the other option we have? We have three plus one so your left subtree would have three and your right subtree would have one so this is the for loop right so you can imagine your for loop coming going from one to three and then putting left and right so that's the second part that's the third part yeah that's the that's the third part where we have to look at breaking the third and fourth where we're breaking down the problem into sub problems we're given five we took one, we have got four left. How many do I put in the left subtree? How many do I put in the right subtree? So that question. So there'll be a there'll be a for loop which goes through finding how many values to put into the left and into the right. Okay? So that's one thing. Now let's make this a little bit more complicated, right? By looking at n is equal to n is equal to seven. Okay. So for n is equal to 5, you've got two options, right? This is, let's drop it up here. And that's n is equal to 5. Now when we're looking at n is equal to 7, let's see how we would do this. We would start by doing n is equal to, we'll put one value here, and then we decide how many do we have left? We've got six left. So what are the options of summing up to six? Uh, let's start with the smallest, one plus five, two plus four, eh, no, fuck off, can't do that. Three plus three, yeah, that's, that's a totally valid option. And then we've got four plus two, eh, 
can't do that again and then finally we've got 5 plus 1 which is also a valid option right now let's look at all of these cases right you gave the left guy one okay he's and now you're iterating through all of these guys now you pick the first guy pick lefts one and then when you try to put five here and you go into let's say that you've created your um, your recursive formulation very well and you just have to trust the fact that you will get all of n is equal to five's uh, trees back so you're going to be gi given a vector back mm, or a hash map of all of the trees that are possible with the value n is equal to 5. So when the value of left is 1 and right is 5, you will get two options. So you will put those two options over here. Put that and put that here. So let's do that. And let's draw the other one here. So by, by, by doing this, you're able to find all of the combinations of n is equal to 7. So in this case, you would have 1, 2, 4, 1 plus 5. And then for 3, 3, is there any other option? No, because it will just return you one value, right? And then 5, 1, it would, this whole thing would get um, mirrored and you'd get, the va you'd get another 2. So the total number of... Um, trees that you'll get for n is equal to 7 is 5. So 1, 2, 3 plus 3 and then 4, 5. Now the last part is about cloning requirement. Now we know that each and every one of these actually let's draw let's draw everything I mean We know that each and every one of these nodes or each and one of these trees has to be a unique tree, right? You can't have, so for example, what I'm trying to say here is that, let's say uh, you have, you're have you trying to figure out one and five, right? One on the left and five on the right. You have this guy, this node here. You can't reuse this node when you're trying to recreate this node right you cannot for the reason that this head would point to this guy and in terms of memory and trying to figure out let's say you delete this guy from this particular node this particular tree it's going to affect the other tree so what we want are completely separate individual trees who've got their own character their own behavior who are totally separate entities so because of that, you need to have some cloning mechanism. So you know that there's one left guy who is just one, but if he's the only one there, you have to clone him the second time. Now this might take some time to understand why we're doing this, but the more you look at the problem, you'll, the more you'll understand why we require cloning in this case. Now. Why don't we need cloning for n is equal to 5, right? It's returning two values. That's because it's actually two separate, completely separate trees. Like, so this tree is completely independent of this tree. They are com because every time you recurse down, you're creating completely new subtrees. You don't have to worry about creating that. But here, because you're, you're not changing, the, your index is still the same. You just have one tree of, of size one, right? And you can't just take that tree and place it here. You could, but then you're going to fuck it up later in your, uh, whenever you're going to use a tree. So what you want to do is create, every time you see that you're reusing um, one of the trees that you've used, you're going to create a copy of that. And that's very important to this problem. Let's look at, another example 
um, or let's let's look at the, the the case where it's flipped right even when it's doing the other thing where you have Now this, we are recreating this, right? So this would be, oops, you might not be able to see that. Same problem when you come here, right? We, we just have one guy of, of right, right? N of n is equal to one, it's one single guy. But as we are iterating to the options of n is equal to 5, we have two people. And now every time we go through that, we can't keep reusing the same guy. We can use the same type of um, clone. Yeah, we can use the same kind of person, same kind of tree, but we can't use the same tree itself. So that's why cloning is very important in this problem. So just to quickly recap, the, a full binary tree is a tree where you every node has either zero children or both of the children okay or the full number of children is full uh, if you are given a an, an odd value then there is a possibility of making a full binary tree if it's an even number hell no there's no way you can create a uh, create a full binary tree to solve this problem we're going to start with the big case and start solving smaller so here we took um, smaller examples and then we incorporated into a bigger value of n is equal to 7. We took 7, we took one value, we tried to subdivide and that's where we're looking for this left-right breakdown like how do you, how many, uh, how many nodes do you give to the left, how many nodes do you give to your right and then based on that you filter out some of the values by checking whether it's an even then just filter it out and if it's odd yeah go check it out and the last thing is if you've got one node that's that's being reused while the, uh, the the right side of the or the other side of your solution of your tree has a lot more options like in this case of having one in the left but your your right side has multiple options then you have to clone your uh, the, uh, the node that you're reusing because you don't want it to be pointing to the same to the same node that you've created earlier because later when you're using, when you're making some change or you're trying to dereference some one of these trees, then you're going to end up in a lot of trouble. So that is full binary tree. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope you understood. If you did not understand, please definitely hit me up in the comments and we can talk more about it. Thank you, stay safe. Hey everyone, if you like the video, Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Hmm. Uh, there's also a GoFundMe page where you can go and fund my wife's dental school. And I would like it if you would donate anything. <laughs>